Hey guys, Katie Kleber here. We're going to talk a little bit about that situation in South Carolina where two nurses got arrested back in December. Now, I know we're all fresh off of the whole Redon Devant thing going down last year, um, and that was pretty serious and really shook up a lot of people. Now we're seeing headlines of nurses getting arrested for not um, providing, you know, care to whatever expectation and we could possibly lose our licenses and go to jail for not doing everything perfectly. And I'm already seeing like the nurse response online of, oh no, if I miss a dressing change, I'm going to jail. So first let's get a little, let's S bar, S bar this guy. So a situation, the situation is two nurses got arrested. Okay. Why did they get arrested? They got arrested because in September of 2022, over September 9th to 11th, these two LPNs, one newly licensed, one who'd been licensed for quite a while. Um, over those two days, the, uh, the officials stated that they knowingly and willfully, I'm quoting here, failed to provide the necessary care to maintain the health and safety of two residents at a skilled nursing facility. Specifically, the, they state that the women intentionally failed to change the victim's wound dressings, causing their wounds to increase in size, resulting in both the victims suffering unnecessary harm and risk of their physical health. Okay. So what happened was, you know, they just, the officials with the state's Medicaid fraud control unit. So the fraud people from Medicaid and the um, police department uh, decided that they were going to arrest and charge them. So we, this is these are literally all the details we have. Okay, they were arrested. It occurred in September. Arrested in December. They have had their second appearance. They're out both out on bond, but they've had their second appearance in the, at the end of January. Nothing else new. I looked up the public records right now. Nothing else new since then. We know these things tend to be kind of slow. Not sure what, what the next, they're waiting for their, I believe, hold on, let me look up my, my search here. It says um, that we're on their, we're pending a second appearance. Okay. So that's where we are right now. It's a criminal case and their char, the specific charges are neglect of a vulnerable adult. Now here's my Thought. When I look at this and try to think, what the heck happened? So, um, so that's our situation. My assessment. Um, I'm sorry. Background. I think I did the background the situation and the background. I think I provided those things. The situation they're arrested. The background is the deeds. Okay. My assessment. Okay. When it says, I, I literally, I read this article a few times. I literally just saw the fraud, Medicaid fraud situation, and I wonder. If these two residents had complex dressing changes that were ordered maybe BID twice a day, every four hours or whatever, I wonder if they charted that they did it, but clearly did not. And I wonder if family members discovered this, because, you know, a lot of people will date their dressing change. And I wonder if it got a lot worse. I wonder if their doctors found out. Maybe, maybe family, maybe a doctor, maybe they brought the family member brought them for a follow-up appointment and saw it. Maybe it was a pretty extensive wound. And maybe I could see that happening. This is complete speculation. I could see that happening. I could also see. We're talking about a skilled nursing facility, right, Joe? These are two LPNs in a skilled nursing facility. I could also see. These nurses have way too many patients and that these dressing changes, they didn't think were a big deal, a big deal enough to ensure that they were done over a period of two days. I'm wondering if one of them was day shift and one of them was night shift guessing doesn't say here. I'm going to guess that's what happened. Um, and wondering if a dressing change was supposed to be done on days and nights. Um, and if you say you did something that you didn't do, and then something bad happens and it's clear you didn't do what you charted you did. And now, because let's say these, let's say these were extensive dressing changes, Medicaid got to pay for how it got worse, right? So maybe the wound got bigger. Maybe they need surgery. Maybe they need whatever. I don't know. And then we add on, they're probably 
don't have, they probably have impaired wound healing. They probably, you know, they're in a skilled nursing facility. They probably, you know, are comp de- com- um, uh, uh, what is that word I'm trying to think of? I can't think of it, but they're tr- probably um, unable to, you know, heal like someone who wouldn't have to be in a nursing home. is. So they're, you know, vulnerable adults. Oh, I, I wonder if that's what happened. Um, and they thought someone thought it was bad enough and maybe it was a family member and maybe someone knew someone who knew someone with the DA or maybe the Medicaid people were like, this is criminal. You can't do this to an elderly patient and you can't tell us you did something you didn't do. And now you want us to pay for it. No. Oh, I wonder if that's what happened y'all. I don't know. This all I got is this little news article. I'll put this, uh, the link to the news article in there. But, um, so that's my, my, um, biased assessment without having anything else to go on. Um, so here's my recommendation, y'all. We got to get to that R of the S bar. I noticed on social media because a lot of us are like, Oh my gosh, like I could get arrested for missing a dressing change. And There's a difference between like accidentally missing something, um, realize, oh no, I missed a dressing change. There's a difference between like doing that and going to shifts, not charting that you charted, maybe charting that you did it. That's, ooh, 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 that's the big one. I I didn't do it, but I'm charting that I did, um, which I'm guessing happened, you know, and then that resulting in a pretty like serious, um, continuation or worsening of an injury, right? Those are very different situations. This isn't like a, I was really busy with 10 patients and I completely forgot about this. Um, they, the, I, I would not be surprised if this was a, I didn't have time. I'm just going to chart. I did it. No big deal. It'll be fine. I'll get to it tomorrow when I'm back. That kind of a rationalization. I also, I, I guess my recommendation too is to not stuff. But they're very, I don't, they're not like, there are are times when it's like, oh, this could happen to anybody. And then there's times where it's like, could that happen to anybody? And then there's also times where we kind of are in a not great work situation and it's a place where we're risking our license and we're willingly staying there. And I know getting a job and maintaining an income, that's a big deal, but also like, um, you know. Hospitals, healthcare facilities will work with as few staff as possible, right? We've had times where we get an assignment we're like, this isn't safe. I shouldn't be doing this. And there's a point when it's like, okay, am I going to put myself in this? Like if these LPNs worked at this place and they worked there for a long time and knew that they had a terrible ratio and they knew the hospital or the healthcare facility would not have their back, especially in a situation like this. Um, like maybe it was a culture where, oh, well, if you don't have the time, just chart that you did it, you know, no big deal. We just get your charting done. Don't stay late. Um, you know, I know you're constantly behind and every med med is late, whatever. It's not a big deal. And then when something happens, oh my God, why didn't you do that? We always tell you to do the best thing that you can, you know? And it's like the LPN is going to be that scapegoat because it's a lot easier to just get rid of you and get a new one in there than to actually pay for you to have the things that you need to do your job well. So I think that there's a, in a, a degree of um, like being street smart about that as a nurse, as someone who holds the license and not assuming that anywhere you go, that they're going to pre- care just as much about protecting your license as you care about protecting yours. Okay. Um, so I think that there's a pr- important wisdom to have just as a nurse in the working workforce. So you know, I could see this being a little bit of everybody's fault and that maybe what bumped it into, uh, oh man, you just missed a dressing change to, oh, whoa, this really hurt a patient would, could be maybe falsifying documentation, you know, making something significantly worse Um, and doing it over two, you know, maybe they were both each had a 12 hour shift where they charted, they did it and didn't do it or where they just chose not to. And, you know, I mean, honestly, when I don't know these people, I don't know this situation, the place, but 
a lot of people working in these nursing homes are working there, but uh, they're like, they barely get a break. There's not enough people there to take care of the patients there. It takes them three hours to get their meds passed to all the residents. It's if someone has to go to the bathroom, it's like, oh, it takes like 30 minutes because they're you're constantly taking people to the bathroom. Um, it's not the best at all. Um, and that's probably like the reality of the situation. And then there may be in their minds, it's like, it's not a big deal to miss this dressing change. I don't care. I've got too many other things to do. I don't think that these nurses were, is my assumption, not kicking it at the nurse's station. Like, I don't care about that. I don't want to do that. Usually people in these situations are significantly overworked. They're not just like hanging out like and got everything done and choosing not to do this. So I will be interested to hear more details when they come out. Um, and want you as a license holding nurse or a nursing student to just have that wisdom and that like discernment and being skeptical of not always wholeheartedly trusting your employer to watch, to care as much about protecting like your license as they care about protecting themselves and their stakeholders, right? So we have a duty to be diligent with the care that we provide. No, oh, wow, I'm repeatedly being put in situations that are unsafe. I need to remove myself from this situation, even if that means working somewhere else, taking a pay cut, having a whatever. Because if I lose my license or if I get criminally charged, it is not worth that. So, you know, I think that's a, a really important piece to maintain that um, that helps you protect yourself and still be able to be a great nurse. Now, I ch- now what's next? What's next? We'll see what happens with the next appearance. I checked the South Carolina State Board of Nursing website. They both still have their licenses on good standing. There, there's likely a complaint filed against them. So not only will they have to defend themselves in criminal court, they will also have to defend themselves to their state board of nursing, um, which are two completely different things. They could go under disciplinary stuff for their license and still have their license, but just have to go through a process of remediation or fines or whatever. But then there's also the criminal aspect too. It did say they could face as much as five years in prison. Do I genuinely think that's going to happen? Probably not. Um, but we'll see. I'll keep you guys updated. Thanks guys. If you want to stay updated on me and Fresh RN, make sure you sign up for our newsletter, which link will be below in the description. We send out weekly little tips, tricks, advice, and we also have a bunch of like things like resources, a blog, a podcast, and courses to help you all transition um, from nursing school to practice. Thanks nurses. Stay fresh.